Hello, everyone, and thank you for your time uh, on the session today, uh, where we will discuss why GitLab with Terraform Cloud. For doing that, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Samir Akub. I'm a Senior Channels and Alliances Solutions Architect uh, for the APAC region, working with GitLab. Uh, these are my uh, contacts. Please feel free to reach out after the session. I'm more than happy always to add uh, professional people to my network. So, so basically the scope of the call today is to answer a common question I've been getting in, in the field uh, from both partners and customers, which is basically, uh, okay, we are already using Terraform Cloud. We are already running our Terraform scripts in under our Terraform Cloud. We know that we can integrate GitLab as a backend source code management solution with Terraform Cloud. But is that really it? Does it add any other value? Does it really worth the effort to integrate? Should we uh, integrate it or not? So I thought to, to do this recording to answer uh, these questions and I hope uh, to be able to clarify uh, what I found. So let's start from the very beginning. Uh, this is the typical use case where I have a GitLab uh, account and I have a Terraform Cloud account I have my Terraform scripts uh, managed under GitLab as a version control system or source code management uh, 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 solution. And I have that integrated with my uh, Terraform cloud workspace. One to, can be one to many. And my state files are managed in the Terraform cloud. So I'm not making any comments on the architecture where, where you should run your Terraform scripts, whether in GitLab or Terraform cloud, this is outside the scope of the call today. But the question is, what can be done better, right? What is the value? What, what are the catches that we should take care of when we do this kind of setup? There is a major thing. The, the integration between the two here, between GitLab and Terraform Cloud, is only done on one branch. Let me show you something. So in my, I hope you can see the screen. I've, I've tried to split the screen in the middle so you can see both sides. So on the right here, I have my uh, Terraform Cloud uh, account and here I have my GitLab project. So under workspaces, I will not go in this, in this session on how to set up the integration. It's a very straightforward uh, setup. You can find the instructions detailed even on, uh, on the Terraform website from HashiCorp. But assume that you've already set up a workspace. Uh, let's say like this is my workspace here, right? And under the workspace, you have already, or you have configured a version control system in the background. And it is in my case, of course, GitLab. So I have GitLab as a version control provide, uh, sorry, as a source code management uh, solutions supporting my, my script. So the idea here is I have, um, GitLab, I have gitlab.com uh, uh, account, and I have this repository here, which is basically this one here on, on, the, on the left. And uh, it is integrated with that one so that whenever I commit changes to a branch, and this is a major thing, a VCS branch, like by default, it takes the default branch, which is in GitLab, the main branch. I can change that, but you have to specify a branch Otherwise, it will take a main branch, the main branch, right? So, whenever I commit change to the to this branch here, uh, a run will automatically be triggered under the Terraform uh, cloud, where it will do the planning initialization. You can see I've discussed it many when it runs before, so it will do the initialization, it will do the planning, and then I can do the apply. Uh, there, I don't have to worry about running my 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 uh, Terraform. Uh, I mean, nodes or uh, managing the state. That's all done in the Terraform cloud. Wonderful, cool. Thank you. Now, the thing is, I have my project here where I can do like okay. Again, this is a group group. As you may already know, GitLab is organized in groups and you can have subgroups as in my case I have two I have one subgroup and then I have my project and the project is where you have your code uh, managed so this is my source code and I will use the built-in IDE in GitLab the web IDE here so just to show you something so this is the default case I have changes like this is the pipeline file in GitLab and 
I will just do simply a change, commit anything space, I will commit that to the main branch because that is the only branch currently connected to the Terraform cloud. And once I do that in GitLab, if I go back to the project main under the pipelines, you'll see that a pipeline has been triggered. And if you notice on the right, it's a run already being triggered in, in Terraform cloud, right? For that change, because I have committed something in the Terra, into the Terraform, into the repo, which is connected to the workspace in Terraform cloud. Cool, that's nice, that's nice. But there is always a but. What about the vulnerabilities in the Terraform scripts, right? So today, vulnerabilities are everywhere, right? And we have to be able to run our scripts safely, quickly, and safely, right? So the change, like in GitLab, uh, the pipeline is, is running here. Uh, it, the, che the run has already been triggered on the right, in the right uh, for uh, that uh, Terraform, Terraform run. Right, and this is the, that in, the job that's been added to my pipeline because I have that integration running, right? So it's a normal, a normal pipeline, but I'm already committed to the main branch. So if there are any uh, vulnerabilities, uh, they've already been added to the main branch. That's already been pushed to the planning phase in, in Terraform and uh, the Terraform cloud. And that if, if it pass all the, sentimental uh, rules or conditions, it will be applied, right? I will, I will, like, all that I have to do is just click here and like do confirm and apply, and that will basically do the changes to my uh, to my infrastructure. And in this case, in, uh, it will create an instance in, in AWS. That's not really the best case scenario, the happy day scenario, because first, I need to have vulnerabilities checked before I go into the, the uh, apply uh, or the planning into Terraform Cloud. Second, I really don't want to have the changes only checked in the main branch. I want that to be checked on, on each and every branch or change I do in my, in my source code. And that's exactly where GitLab comes in the picture and add and complete the solution for, for managing my Terraform scripts. So if I go back to the, uh, to the files here. And if I go back to my pipeline file, <clears throat> excuse me. And two things I can do. First, I can add the GitLab Terraform scanning. Uh, let me edit this, edit this in the editor. And so what I can do is I can, uh, open this in our, our add the SAS scanning job and from GitLab that is doing SAS scanning for infrastructure as a code, right? Full details on this can be found on GitLab SAS with, with page, which is, which is here. So which is actually, let me open it. Like the easiest is if I do, sorry, Google uh, SAS, uh, sorry, GitLab, oh my God, GitLab. Sast file and C, and it will be our link here. So, full details on the capabilities of this SAST scanner or static application security testing, testing scanner can be found. As you can see under the hood, it is using the open source tool Kix to do scanning and also it's actually, it can not only scan Terraform, it can also scan, scan CloudFormation scripts, Kubernetes um, uh, scripts, Terraform scripts and, and Ansible scripts. In our case, I'm using it to you to scan the Terraform script. By the way, you don't have really to, uh, I mean, uh, select which script, it will autom automatically uh, scan whatever scripts available in your, uh, in your repo it will auto, det auto, sorry, auto detect that and, and scan it. Cool. So what I've done here is I've said, okay, I will add, a, 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 I mean, a change. Uh, I will add that as a scanning. So I will commit, commit that, right? So I'll still push that to my, my main branch. So commit, and then let's have a look on the branch, uh, on the pipeline that has been triggered this time as well. In here, I will discard 
previous run, just I don't want to apply and run. So I'll dispel the previous run and go back to the runs on the right. And the same time under our, under my pipeline here, I will just go to the pipeline uh, in the project, which is this one here. I hope splitting the screen is making, is not making uh, viewers uh, life harder. So I'll just hear. So, okay, cool. So this is now the scanning uh, job that has been added, right? And I will wait just a second to make it, to, to get it to run and, and finish and see, see the results. Now, as I said, we have, we are aiming to solve two things. First, I want to do scanning on each and every vulnerability before I push that into the Terraform. Second, I need to do that before I push it into the Terraform cloud or before I push it into the branch that is connected to my Terraform cloud workspace. In my case here, the branch is the main branch. That's why this run has been, has been triggered even though I have not finished the scanning on, on my testing, uh, on, my, on my changes. So I will just give it a second to run. Uh, yep, it should run in seconds. Dun, dun. And it uh, should be, it should, I should go, oh, it should finish in seconds. It's just running in the background. Just pulling the, from the registry, the image for the scanner. By the way, um, GitLab has, uh, this is one of the many security scanning uh, our vulnerability scanning capabilities available in GitLab. So we, here we are using SAS for infrastructure, but you can use, you can as well add all the other scanners, secret detection, DAS, uh, license management, fast testing and dependency scanning. So I have the security job here uh, finished, right? So let's go to the pipeline. Nice thing in GitLab is as a developer, I can see the results directly in my, in my pipeline or within my pipeline. If I go to the security, okay, here we talk. Now, these are all the vulnerabilities and two of them are critical vulnerabilities actually that have been detected in this very, very simple Terraform uh, cloud uh, script, sorry, Terraform scripting I'm doing. By the way, the Terraform scripting is just, it's just creating one, uh, one open tool. So, so these are all the, all the vulnerabilities. I, so remember, that's why it's important to use GitLab security, not only for source code management, but also to, to scan the changes before I push, push them. Now, to do that before, or to see the changes before I push them into the Terraform Cloud, let's pick one of the, of the changes here. Let's see, for example, uh, this one, this vulnerability. So it says, uh, okay, the, the EC2 instance should not have uh, a public IP address. Okay, fair enough. And it's undefined or uh, 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 it's undefined or not. Fine, that's that's fine. I will I will start working on it. So I will go. Uh, by the way, it's telling me directly in which file it is. So it is in this file under this line. So what we can do is let's go back to our IDE and. I will do make a change here, say, okay, don't associate public IP address, make it false. And I commit, I will commit that. But this time I will not commit that to the main branch directly, right? I will make it into my feature branch. So let's say uh, EC2 public IP. And I will open a merge request. By the way, merge request in GitLab is similar to pull requests in other platforms, but to be honest, it makes more sense as a merge request because I'm merging something. So I'm saying here, I'm opening a new branch for my change. I'm opening, also I'm doing comment here, which we should open for me uh, this page to fill in the details of the merge request. I can assign it, I can set the reviewers, milestones, labels, all that. So that's a, another day story to go to the details of the merge request. So let's create a merge request here. 
Now, once this merge request has been created, you would see that an, a pipeline has been triggered. Now, if I go, let me, let me dismiss the previous run. Discard this one. Discard this one, okay, I'll go back to commits. You see that there is no a new pipeline or new run in the Terraform cloud. And if I go to my pipeline here, you'll see that I only have my normal jobs and my security testing job because this is not the main branch. This branch I'm working on is my branch. It is my feature request or feature, not feature, it's my, the branch I'm adding the feature into, which is I'm fixing the EC2 public IP uh, address uh, thing. So I will just let it run the build for a second. And we will see that hopefully we should not have that severe error here again. And you will like, okay, now it is running. By the way, if I click on the merge request link itself, it will show me that I have a pipeline running. I have a mirror for that merge request. And it, once it is done, I will be able to see the uh, uh, findings in this, in this pipeline. So, okay, so it is, it is running, but it's very important not to note that nothing has been pushed into the uh, Terraform cloud. While it is running, let me summarize here. Initially, I have Terraform Cloud account, excellent. And I have, I've connected that to GitLab project as source code management for in the background, perfect. Now, when you do this configuration in the, in the settings, you will need to specify a branch where you are connecting the changes to the back end system, right? In, 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 um, in, uh, in, in GitLab, cool. That means that any change to that branch will automatically, and by the way, it can be automatically or based on conditions in Terraform Cloud to run the, to do the run or to trigger the run under that, that workspace. The need, I don't want that to happen every time. Second, I want all the vulnerabilities to be scanned and my changes and my code to be scanned before it is pushed to the Terraform Cloud within so that the developer can um, um, remediate, fix them, dismiss them, take action on them basically before they are pushed. So this time, this pipeline is running on my merge request. And if I go inside my pipeline, and if I go again in the security, you see that now we only have one critical vulnerability and that uh, public IP address uh, is not there anymore. Now, if I go into my merge request, Cool. So this is now in very, very important. In my GitLab project, I can, let me just maximize this for a second. In my GitLab project, I can do a conditional uh, or I can customize the conditions for approving merge request. I'll show you something. So under here, under settings, under uh, CI, uh, uh, under, yeah, general, and under merge request approvals. I'll show you something what I have. I have the normal condition and I have added this condition as well. You see this one, which says basically, if I add it, it says for all scanners, if you have across all the branches, if you have a, any, any vulnerability with any, any status or uh, state uh, with any severity, Please include this person, by the way, this is the other me using my Hotmail uh, account. Please include this person to do the approval. And that person can be a user or a group. This is very useful because I can dynamically include my security team to have another look on these changes in newly introduced vulnerabilities in my branch and to get their approval. So if no, severity or uh, of, if these conditions do not apply to my change, the, the team will not be included, included in my approval cycle. Otherwise, they will be dynamically added to the approvals, uh, prerequisites or people who should approve uh, the merge request into order to be uh, merged.
opened here. So this is my other other me. And if I go under my the merge request, and this is the one. And now I can go here and I can go, yep, approve. So now this is this has been approved. So if I go back to my merge my pipeline, I go actually, if I go direct to the merge request, I can do that, see that directly there, which is this one. And cool. Now I can merge once the other approvals have this guy who's the other me have approved or has approved that that change so now i can click merge and that will merge the change into the main branch and again then it will trigger the pipeline and then it will now it will it should at some point trigger the run and yep here we go you see the change here this is the planning now it is tri triggering the run in the Terraform cloud. So, so I hope I hope that gives you an idea on why we should be using uh, a, a GitLab security scanning along with the GitLab source code management capabilities to support my Terraform cloud uh, scripts and Terraform cloud uh, account. I hope that was useful. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please uh, feel free to send me back uh, if you have any questions or, or feedback. Thank you very much.